In terms of healthcare delivery, America, in terms of the Western industrialized world, is in uh, the bottom quartile. So that, for instance, just to give you one example, of all Western industrialized nations, America has, is 13, in 13th place with regard to infant mortality, which is quite stunning when you think about it. So there is obviously a gap between um, what we could call the major strategic functions, which is organizing the pursuit of knowledge about what uh, healthcare needs to be to manage disease, uh, and the performance management in which uh, healthcare professionals deliver services. And that gap is what, um, if you're looking at this sheet, which, which has been handed out to you, that gap is what I would call theory of change. So it probably would be useful to you to actually cast one of your eyes on this sheet as, as, as I'm talking to you. It is um, relatively easy to design an efficient um, physician's practice. You line up a bunch of rooms, you put patients into them, the physicians or the physician's assistant moves from room to room. It's essentially a, uh, a static conveyor belt with, with the patients not moving but the physicians moving along. And it can be quite profitable. Even with all of the restrictions put on the physicians by the uh, healthcare management associations. Um, that does not add up to necessarily delivering high quality healthcare, however. Um, it can deliver um, aspects of high quality health care. You can make sure people get their immunization shots. You can make sure people get screened for various things that need to be screened for. Um, you, can make sh you can make sure people get um, um, uh, appointments for uh, mammograms and other, and other uh, periodic tests and assessments to make sure that um, early detection of onsetting pathology is found and all of those things. You can do those things. But you, um, you can't very well de de develop a caring relationship. And there's actually quite a body of research that shows that um, the quality of the caring relationship is a contributor. It's not a determinant of, but it's a contributor to the successful delivery of good, of good health care. So what's happened in this country uh, for a variety of reasons with no single uh, uh, entity being the villain by any means. Um, but what's happened in this country, as you all know, is that um, there has been a loss of focus on why healthcare is important. And many things have not gone discussed. For instance, um, most of uh, the American public doesn't know that almost 60 cents out of every healthcare dollar is spent on prolonging the last six months of people's lives. Do you understand what that means? That means 60 cents out of every dollar that's spent on healthcare in America is not going to infants, is not going to toddlers, is not going to uh, latency age kids, is not going to teenagers, is not going to young parents, is not going to middle aged people. It's going to prolong lives for the last six months of people's lives because we are desperately wanting not to have people die. But of course everybody dies. So there has been no national debate that I'm aware of that says, how should we apportion where we deliver health care resources? Should we really, really spend 60 cents out of every health care dollar on the last six months of people's lives doing very expensive, very expensive uh, procedures, which those usually are? You know, heart and lung transplants, liver transplants, experimental, very expensive drug infusions, um, brain operations, um, all of these kinds of things that, that prolong people's lives, not necessarily with a good quality of life. Now, the reason I'm going on a bit about that is because I would like you to use this story to reflect on your organization and ask yourself, if it is true for us, as it is for healthcare delivery in America, that we want to improve the health of people in America, which I think is a fair thing to say is the mission of healthcare, of the healthcare system, 
We want to improve the health of, of people in America. If that is the mission at the highest level, if that's what gives meaning to people's coming to work, how can it happen that in the execution of the daily activities, there is so much slippage between what the original mission was and what actually people are doing? In nonprofit organizations, if you look at people's missions, um, which is the meaning, the reason people come to work every morning, and you start and you look at what people actually are doing, there's an enormous gap um, between the execution and, and the mission. And so the question is, what can you do about that? And so what I've done is I've developed a, a logical set of relationships that start at the highest level of abstraction and move systematically down to the least abstract, most concrete things that an organization does. And I'd just like to walk you through it. I believe in missions. I believe in motivators. People need motivation to come to work. People work very, very hard. And people don't get paid a heck of a lot of money to do it. So they need something that gives their lives meaning in their professional work, especially in the nonprofit sector. So a mission is very important. But by itself, a mission has really no meaning other than as a motivator. Think of it as a flag. You know, The troops are following the flag. The flag itself isn't going to win the battle. The flag is a reminder of people to people why they are going into the battle, and that's it. It becomes meaningful when an organization sets goals for itself. Goals start to focus the mind. We will do certain things, and you know what? We won't do other things. And that's where um, the principle comes in that organizations need, in order to be successful, to have a certain degree of focus. Um, there's a general notion, which is not entirely true, but not entirely wrong, that the more you focus, the more likely you can be uh, highly effective. I don't buy it completely, but as an idea to wrestle with, it's a good idea for every nonprofit organization to wrestle with, because most nonprofit organizations, at the level of their goals, start to drift around as funding opportunities become available to them. And the more diverse funding opportunities you pursue, mostly because the funding opportunities don't pay for your overhead, and so you're constantly getting new grants to pay for the overhead that you needed to manage the old grants, and it never ends. Um, as these funding opportunities uh, present themselves, they come from funders who have somewhat divergent goals from, from you. And so you start adopting funders' goals. And, um, then you start to get into what's called mission creep, and all of a sudden, when you look at the goals that organizations have, they no longer really align very well with the mission. So there is a certain discipline that, that, that any highly effective organization needs to work relentlessly and forever. It never ends. It's never a matter of writing these things down and then it's done. It's a matter of actually actively pursuing them and keeping your goals very clearly an expression of and a meaningful expression of what your mission is. But goals by themselves can't be achieved or not achieved unless they are made in some ways measurable. And so I wanted to talk to you about how you make them measurable, because goals tend to still be too large. Um, I'll give you an example from my life. I have a, I have a one-person company, me. And my mission is to improve the world for poor people. Okay. My goal is to do that by working in the nonprofit sector to improve the delivery of nonprofit um, services to poor people. That's much too big to measure. But now, if you ask me what my objectives are, my objectives are to work with a selected group of nonprofit organizations and funders to improve their sustainable effectiveness in delivering high quality services to poor people. Now we start to get to the point where th things can be measured, right? So objectives are start to provide you with a framework for thinking about what you should measure and what you shouldn't measure. And what you should ultimately measure are two things, outcomes and outputs. Now there's a lot of confusion in this world about the difference between outcomes and outputs. And so I want to talk to you a bit about that. 